was his course on blowing the horn, the horn of victory. Amen. The horn of victory. If you pay attention today, you will understand what the horn is all about and why the devil cannot stand the sound, the sound of the horn, the sound of the horn. So, um, um, the Bible said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So where we read, we are, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat mm. so that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him and they took the city. So it was the, the voice of the trumpet. Mm. It was the shout of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show you a little bit of the history of the trumpet. The, this one is called the shofar. The shofar is the, is, is the horn of the ram. Mm -hmm. The horn of the ram. So the horn of the ram um, makes a sound, and the sound is the sound of a trumpet. And the, that sound is very, very unique because it symbolizes the voice of God. Amen. So um, you remember how the trumpet, how when God called uh, Abraham, and promised Abraham um, that his children would be like the stars of heaven. You remember that God also told Abraham to sacrifice uh, the only son he has, yes. uh, which is Isaac. You remember that um, they were going for that sacrifice, Abraham. Uh, they went on the way, the, the little boy said, Father, this is the fire and um, where, is the, where is the lamb? And, and the father said that there at the mountain, God will supply. Amen. God will provide. Amen. And uh, that was what happened actually uh, at the mountain where they were going to sacrifice. There was a ram. There was a ram somewhere there held, held at the horn in the ticket. The ticket is the bush. The bush held the horn of the ram. And God said, that is the ram. So the, the ticket held the horn. The horn is the place of power. You see that when an animal has a horn, it has power. The power is in the horn. It can make war to the horn. So, and when you blow that horn, hallelujah, when you blow that horn, you are also blowing power. Power. So, the devil does not like to hear the sound of the horn. Because there's going to be another sound, the last one, the last trump, the last trump, the Bible says, at the last trump, at the sound of the last trump. The voice of an archangel. Mm. That will be the rapture. That will be the taking away of the church. Mm. Yes. That will be the total victory, the defeat of the devil. Mm. So the devil mm. is trembling whenever you blow this one. Mm. He will think it is that last one coming. That one that will destroy him completely. Mm. So I'm going to show you those scriptures now. We we'll try to blow this one in Numbers ten, verse nine. Numbers ten, verse nine. And, and if, if you go, go to war in your, in your land, land against, against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, 
and he shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and he shall be saved from your enemies. Amen. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. He says there, if you are going um, to war, the first thing you do is to blow this, and when you blow it, then you shall blow an alarm um, with the trumpet, and you shall be remembered before the Lord, you are God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So the blowing of this, the Bible says, you shall be saved from your enemies. enemies. How many of us are fighting battles in their life? Um, if you're fighting battles, then you blow this. Uh, that is your war, your own war. Um, you may not go to any other war, this is your war. You're going through a battle. You're going through a, a, lock, a lock case. You're going through an intimidation. You're going through um, a family problem, land, a bank, whatever it is. Whatever it is, you can decide to be prophetic. You blow your your heart. Mm -hmm. You say, the Lord, look at your world. He said, I shall be saved from this enemy that is attacking my family. Mm -hmm. You know that. So the enemy, um, uh, this is a prophetic. It's a prophetic voice. It's a prophetic voice. The enemy will stay away from you. Somebody say Amen. Amen. So in in Genesis twenty two thirteen, look at as in Genesis twenty two thirteen, look at it there. I said, and Abraham lifted up his eyes. Right, this is where the horn is taken. This is the first place in the Bible the horn um, was was mentioned. It said. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him and behold behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his arms and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the state of his son. son. You know, that horn, that lamb, or that ram was held by the horn. By the horn. And that was the one he took for sacrifice. That was the one that delivered his son. We tear that animal held by the horn in a ticket. Maybe the son would have died. But, but that animal saved the life of his own son. And that was a type of redemption by Jesus Christ. It was Jesus that saved us when Jesus came. We are supposed to die, actually, by sin. Uh, Any sin you committed is supposed to be dead. Even if you look at somebody, you hate that person, oh, he's my enemy, you will die. Because that's the death is the penalty for everything. You see that? The, 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 the wages of sin is, is death. death. See that? Some people do not know. They think that they have right to life. No. No. Sin means death. If you have sinned, death. Mm -hmm. But who took the death? Jesus came. Amen. So he died the death. So anytime death wants to come, you can say, the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can stop death yes. by saying, the blood of Jesus represents the death of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Of him, but somebody bleed and die, he's dead. So, the blood of Jesus. That's why in Egypt, the symbol of the death of Jesus was put the blood on the doorpost, put it on the lintel. So, the hand the angel that kills with the sword comes, we see the blood, you say, Oh, somebody is dead already. You, you go. That's, that's, that's how it is. So, when you shout the blood of Jesus, what is the door? The door is your mouth. Somebody say, Amen. 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 The door means your mouth. When you shout the blood, when you plead the blood, mm -hmm. the devil will say, <laughs> He will back off. He will back off. Somebody say, Amen. 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 So, Christian, 
Christians must be doing these things. Christians must be doing these things. Um, what you do not know is that there's, there's heavy war in the spirit. There's heavy war in the spirit. And those wars, when they come in the open, you see it. Like what is happening in, in Hong Kong. You see the demonstrations. You, think, you see, oh, people are demonstrating. It's in the spirit. You don't know that there's war always. Mm. People are fighting. Things yes. are... Um, you see it in your country, you see it in my country, you see it in America. It has always a push. You know, that's why Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. Amen. It is when Jesus rules, when the rule of Christ, Amen. there will be no such thing, there will be no problem at all. There will be peace. Amen. There will be peace. But now, when man is still ruling, this is the time of the human governance. When man is ruling, there's going to be distance. Come on, peace. So, I will advise the church, every strong church must use every prophetic thing like the horn, you know, the, the, the other one, the what? Oil. The oil. The oil. Um, you must, the communion, don't think this is a, a, a not a, this is a powerful. Mm. They are powerful. We must win. We must win. Because Jesus has already shed his blood. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 And his blood will never be in vain. Amen. Amen. Yes. When Abraham saw the ram, who kept the ram there? It was God. Who made the, the ticket to hold the, the horn? To hold the horn of the ram? It was God. God sent the angels to, to provide. And then Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh means God will provide. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Can you prophesy to yourself? Say Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. You are saying God will provide for you. Amen. 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 That thing you need, God will provide it. Amen. See that? Abraham told the son, the son said, This is the fire. This is a uh, uh, us going to the mountain. Where is the lamb? Where is the where is the lamb? Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham don't know what to tell to the boy. He didn't know he was prophesying. God will provide. Don't worry, my son. God will provide. Amen. Amen. Did God provide? Amen. God provided. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So, so the ram was caught by the horn used for um, substitute that may mean that sacrifice for Abraham showed that Jesus will die um, the death of the people when Jesus died he didn't die for himself he died as you as me he died for us so it's the same thing the lamb that ram that ram didn't die for himself that ram uh, died, uh, he, said, he said it was substitute for the son of Abraham, for Isaac. You see that? So, and he was held by the horn. The horn. If you are, if you have committed something and you are running, you run into the, into the tabernacle, into the, the tabernacle is like a church like this. In the olden days, the tabernacle, um, has uh, the altar here, has the lava here, and has uh, the the holy place here, and inside here the holy of holies. See the altar, brazen altar with fire. You know, that's where animals are burnt. Then here is the water, the priest will wash his hand. Then here is the holy place, and then the holy of holies. Now, when they are pursuing you, or you have done something, you run into this place and you go to that altar there you hold the horn the, the altar every altar has four horns one two three four that's the altar if you go there and hold the horn of the altar you know the one pursuing you in israel will leave you they will never do you anything because if they do anything then uh, they are against god they are walking against god so when you go to the altar, you hold the altar like this, the horn. So they'll just leave you. Mm -hmm. Then 
But the moment you come out, they can do anything. But as long as you are holding the horn of the altar, the priest, uh, you are telling God that you are in his hand. Amen. See that? So this is telling you the power of the horn. The horn. The horn. Then, let us see the horn of victory. The horn of victory. When to blow the horn. Uh, the horn of victory awakens the, the, the slumber, those sleeping, to make you to, to awake. Let's see a very good example here. In Numbers 10, let's see that. Numbers 10, 5 and 6. In Numbers 10, 5 and 6, uh, you're going to see the different sound of the horn shows you whether it is for alarm or for war. And the horn makes different sound. And when the different sound is made, you understand which sound is the horn talking about. If they want the people to run, to move, there's a sound for that. If they want people to go to war, there's a sound for that. If they want people to be, to be warned for something, there is a sound. Mm -hmm. Let's see that in uh, Numbers 10, Numbers 10, 5 and 6. Want to go? Okay. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east path shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. So there are alarms, different alarms for different things, right? So that is very, very important. Uh, so that's why Paul said, uh, if, if, if the horn or the trumpet make a distinct sound, it will communicate information well. But if you are blowing the trumpet or the alarm, anyhow, you confuse the people. Mm. They don't know what you are saying. Mm. See that? Because the voice of this is, is talking. Mm. Yes, there's something is communicating. Mm. Then, let's, let's see a little bit um, in yes, First Thessalonians. Let's go to First Thessalonians uh, and talk about the Trump. First Thessalonians First Thessalonians 4, we are going to see 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. So this is, this is what the devil is is afraid of because of this the devil say oh my time is very short my time is because because when the last trump blows that means that his time is up mm -hmm. uh, and christ is coming mm -hmm. to rapture the church yes. so when he hears the voice of this oh is it the last one <laughs> is it um is it the voice of the archangel uh the, the our enemy is afraid of hearing the sound of the throne you see that he said then we which are alive and remain shall, shall be caught up together, together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the, in the air, air and so shall we ever be with the lord and he said therefore comfort one another with these words amen. amen this is the Rapture. rapture the rapture so when the last one blows we are going to be rapture, rapture. we are going to be caught up Hallelujah. with the lord and uh, what is the most important thing in the rapture is the voice of the trumpet mm. the voice of the archangel sounds like the trumpet because that's the voice of god that's the voice of God. So, uh, it is important for us to um, know how to use all these things. 
So when you use whatever that is written in the Bible, it is prophetic. You see that? Um, because there's going to be a voice of the trumpet, then you you start using the trumpet. You see that? You are prophetic. Because you are believing in, word, in the word of God. So that is very, very important. There are a lot of prophetic meetings you attend uh, in Hong Kong. I think the Hong Kong people like um, like prophetic meetings. They like to blow the shelf on. And um, it's very, 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 very good. So you can have your own chauffeur. Let's see Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, 13 and 14. Wow. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So the trumpet wakes up the sleeper. The trumpet wakes up. The sleeper. When you are weak, when you are sleeping, when you are in that mood, you are not conscious, you are not. Blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet and give yourself awakening because it awakens you. So that's one of the things uh, we do. Um, sometimes I blow my own trumpet, I, I blow my own shofar. I, you know, uh, you blow it within the environment. You will see the result. Uh, even uh, your neighbor's dog will stop. Uh, they will bark and they will bark when they hear the voice of this. But um, you are going to also intimidate them and say no more. Any tongue that is raised against me in judgment, I condemn it. Amen. You blow the trumpet. You see that? These are prophetic things every believer should be doing. You see, you don't allow intimidation because. Um, because when the devil is intimidating you, that shows that you don't know your right. You don't know what the Bible has provided for you. See that? You must use the oil, anoint yourself. Anoint yourself. Don't go asking pastors to anoint you. You can anoint yourself. Mm -hmm. Anoint yourself. You know, you, you, you're having confusion. You say, what, what? Confusion? No. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I anoint myself. Yeah. Amen. Confusion, go. You know, <laughs> Move up, or, or you, you are feeling weak, 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 you just blow your sofa. <laughs> Scare them off. Blow your, your sofa is a sign of awakening. It's a sign of awakening mm. when you blow the sofa. And let's see First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15. We're going to read 51 to 57. You will see the destruction of death and uh, the the shofar is part of it. Now let's read. One to go. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last drop, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now let's not hold it forth. You see that the trump will be the trumpet will be sound and something that was dead will rise up again. You know, it's for quickening. The sound of the trumpet quickens. You see that it brings life. You wake up. It's a wake up call, right? That's what, what English call it. They say it's a wake up wake up. A wake up call. It's a wake up call. Now let's read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So then, this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that he is written, then is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sin? O grave, where is thy victory? The sin of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You see, you see that um, uh, to blow your heart is very very good. Uh, it, it shows, it shows that you believe the pattern, the pattern God has already ordained. You know that that the, that that Jesus will not just come. He will not just come, but there will be a sound. There will be a sound first. The trumpet will blow. The trumpet, and the trumpet is saying, "Wake up! Is a wake up call? Wake up! The Lord is here." Somebody say, "Amen." Amen. So, so if you blow the trumpet on your own, you are saying the same thing the Bible says. If I blow this trumpet and say, "Wake up," you see that because that is the voice of the archangel. Now, when you see in Leviticus twenty-three. Leviticus 23 and then um, 24, verse 24. You know that the trumpet is blown in all the feasts. There are various feasts. Um, like, can anybody re remember some of the Jewish feasts? Mm. Do you know their names? Does anybody remember any, any of the Jewish feasts you know? The Feast of Trumpets. The Feast, the feast of, of Trumpets. Trumpet. Yes, the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, they will blow their horn. The Feast of Pentecost. They will mm. also blow their horn. The horn. Then the Feast of um, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh ha yes. Hashanah is the is the festival of light. Mm. They will also blow the trumpet. They will blow the trumpet or the horn or the shofar. Then there's uh, one of the biggest feasts is the Yom Kippur. Yeah, the Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is the day, um, well, it represents on our own calendar the day Jesus died mm. and opened the life gates for everyone to come in. Mm. That is the day of uh, atonement. Uh, it's the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. Uh, because that very day, it is believed that the sin of Israel is forgiven. Mm. Uh, if um, if the high priest enters and come out alive, you know that the sin of Israel is forgiven. Mm. But if the sin is not forgiven, the high priest may die. May die. <laughs> yes. He may die in that, in that, in that inner room. So um, that's, that's the day of atonement, it's the most holy day. Mm. So before that particular day, everybody will fast for like 10 days. You know, you have to fast for your family, fast. Mm. See that? So that's why fasting is also important. Amen. All those things that are in the Old Testament, they are not removed, they are not cancelled. Mm. They are also important today. Fasting is uh, important. There are things that you need God to pay attention, and when you fast, um, those things begin to happen. Mm -hmm. So let's read Leviticus 23 24. One to go. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the fourth day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath in the order of blowing of trumpets. And holy of my Amen. Amen. So also on the Shabbat. You know, Shabbat is the Saturday, but it is now the Sunday. When Jesus died on, on Friday and then he rose up on Sunday morning, that changed the Shabbat. Instead of Saturday, we now worship on Sunday. And uh, because of resurrection, Sunday means Jesus rose up. Mm. He's no more in the grave. Mm. He's alive. Mm. So, so, so if the Shabbat, those who believe in Shabbat, if they, if they confront you, if they say, why do you worship on, on Sunday? If they say, go to the Bible and see it, then they will open the Old, old Testament. They will not open the New. They will open the Old and they will show you. And uh, it will say, worship on the Shabbat. Then all you need to tell them is that Jesus resurrected on Sunday morning. This is a new day. This is a new and glorious morning. We have entered a new day. The new day is the eighth day. It's not the seventh day. The seventh day is the old day. It's the Shabbat. 
but the new day is the eighth day. The eighth day is the fourth day of the week. John 20 verse 1 says, on the fourth day of, of the, the week, week. The fourth day of the week is Sunday. The fourth day of the week is what? Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's where, and from that time Jesus resurrected on Sunday, the whole church all over the world started worshiping on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Nobody worshiped on Saturday anymore. They say he's alive. Mm -hmm. We have seen him. And he himself demonstrated that it is Sunday. Not that you shouldn't worship on Saturday because we, we we worship on every day, right? Amen. But um, look at what Jesus did. Um, the first Sunday, Jesus came to church. You know, they were all in one place, in one accord, in the upper room. And they closed the door because they were afraid of the Jews. They closed the door very well. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, look at Jesus. He came. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, peace unto you. And they say, everyone was afraid. Nobody replied. Mm -hmm. So he started telling them, why are you afraid? Why are you, you men are little afraid? Why? Come and check me out. Check me out. He showed his hand. See the host, we are there. Then uh, he showed them, them here, you know. That was on Sunday morning. Somebody say amen. 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 But there was somebody who was not there. And Thomas was not there. You remember? Yes. Thomas didn't come to church on that yeah. day. So Thomas didn't come to church on that day. So then after service, they told Thomas, Oh, Jesus came in. Thomas said, it's, it's not true. They said, no, it's true. Jesus came in to church today. You were not there. And Thomas said, unless I see. <laughs> unless I see with my eyes. <laughs> and they even put my hand there. I will never believe. Uh, he didn't know that Jesus had heard what he said. The next Sunday, exactly at the same time, you know, look at Jesus again. He came back again. Mm. So it was on Sunday. It was not a Saturday church. Somebody getting this? Amen. Yeah. This is the order you have to follow. <laughs> so, so because some people come with um, theologies and they, they say, oh, Saturday is in the Bible. But look at the new order. The new order. Mm. Yes, the old order was Saturday. Mm. But there is now a new order. Oh, yeah. The order of Resurrection. Mm -hmm. The other of resurrection is Sunday. So next Sunday, look at Jesus again. He appeared again. Wow, everybody worshipped him. They were happy to see him again. And uh, so he went straight to Judas. Thomas. To, Thomas. to Thomas. Thomas. Thank you. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> he went straight to Thomas. <laughs> uh, he went straight to Thomas. He said, Thomas? He said, yes, sir. Um, you you want to see before you believe? <laughs> Thomas said, uh, he showed the, the, the hand. Thomas was afraid. But he put his dress like this and exposed his side. That mm. one is the one that shattered Thomas. My Lord, my God. When Thomas saw the wound, the wound has not healed. It's still there. Mm. Thomas shouted, my Lord and my, my God. God. So Thomas knelt down and that's how he believed completely. So Jesus said, now you believe, right? But blessed are those who did not see. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So this is uh, what we follow. This is uh, the treasures of our faith. Mm. The treasures of our faith. So another place I want to show before I, I blow the, the horn a little bit for you is uh, Numbers 29 verse 1. Numbers 29 verse 1. These are to show you that in meetings like this, the trumpet should be blown. In every Jewish feast, the trumpet must be blown. Mm -hmm. When you call for a fast, the trumpet must be put blown. See that? He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Call for a fast. Somebody say, Amen. 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 Now let's Let's read that one. One to go. And in the seventh month of the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no survival work. It is a day of blowing the trumpet unto you. Amen. The day of blowing the trumpet unto you. So to blow the trumpet is like a ministry at that time. 
You see that? Um, when you come together, you blow the trumpet. So let me try. Amen. Let's see. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As we blow the trumpet, Lord Father. Yes, God. Let every situation be. Amen. Receive the power of God. Amen. And let the operator be set to it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, one more time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Don't get the devil he is now. The devil is very, very afraid. He's running away. Amen. He said, I heard the sound of a trumpet. Is it time already now? So he's running away. So let's try it again. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So that is the sound of the shofar. Hallelujah. The shofar is the ram's horn. The horn of the ram was what caught the first ram that was used for sacrifice. Abraham said, God will supply. Amen. And God supplied by the horn. That animal was held by the horn. And then God gave it to Abraham. Abraham used it to replace his son. In the same way, he gave us Jesus. Amen. And then Jesus was sacrificed instead of us. Amen. See that? So that is what this thing is saying when we sound it. He's saying that one has been provided for your for you. And he's saying, set him free. Amen. Because there's a ransom. Yeah. There's a ransom for him. There's a ransom for her. Set her free. Set him free. Let's read uh Job. That is the last. Wow. Okay, read 14. Then we'll read them um, uh, 19 to 23. Okay? Okay, 14. One to go. For God preached once, yet twice, yet man perceived it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when he slept, called upon men, in slumbering upon the bed. Now let's see. Let's read them. 19. He is chastised also with pain upon his face, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorred bread, and his soul then timid. His flesh is consumed away, that he cannot be seen, and his bones that we are not seen sit out. Yet, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Amen. That is what the this is this is what the voice says. He said, when you are you come sick and you are not eating food anymore, and your bones that were covered before when you were fat and healthy are now sticking out and everybody is seeing your bones and they are saying, Oh, what's happening to him is he's, he's gonna die, he's gonna fall into the pit. You see that? He said, if at that moment if one, a messenger, a messenger is a preacher or your pastor or your elder, whoever it is, or yourself, you are also a messenger, can tell that sick person, you are not dying, you won't die, because God has already found a ransom for you. There's a ransom for you. You will not die out of this sickness. Somebody must have to tell that person this. You are not going to die because God has given you 
A ransom. What is a ransom? Somebody who comes to replace you. Somebody who comes to take your place. Somebody who comes to die instead of you. Who is that ransom? Jesus. Jesus. That's what the place is saying. Then you tell that person, you are not going to die. You will not fall into the deep. Because God has provided a ransom. Look at what will happen when, when you hear that thing. When the sick person hear, he says, um, Then he is gracious unto him. And uh, said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Look at what will happen. His flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. Amen. Healing is taking place. Amen. Amen. He shall return to the days of his youth. 26. He, he shall, shall pray, pray unto God, God and, and he, he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy. joy. For, For he, he will render, render unto man, man his righteousness. righteousness. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is good for somebody here. If anybody is sick here, we are saying the same thing to you today. You have heard the voice of the throne, the voice of the shofar, the voice of the horn. And I'm saying to you now prophetically, you shall not die. Amen. For God has provided for you a ransom. Amen. Jesus died in your place so that you can live. You are going to live. Whatever secret it is, whatever situation it is, you have overcome by the blood.